Hello there, and welcome to the Potent Puffin Podcast. Now I'm your host, Jake Thomas. And with me again this week is Kita, the Elk Hound. Now, this has been a weird week because we've been traveling back to our home in Kodiak, Alaska from Arkansas earlier this week. And that trip went absolutely not as planned. Originally, we were supposed to fly out um, of Little Rock midday, and we would have gotten to Anchorage around 4.30 uh, Alaska time. And we were going to overnight in Anchorage, and then fly out the next afternoon. That did not happen. Um, Our flights were supposed to leave on Saturday, and then um, Friday night, um, about 11 o'clock Central Time, we got notifications on our phone that one of our connecting flights had been canceled. And then about half an hour later, we got um, a confirmation email from our airline stating that that flight had been rescheduled and we were rebooked on the same flight the next day, meaning we would have ended up missing um, our flight from Anchorage to Kodiak because it was on a separate reservation. And so we would have missed that flight and we would have had to overnight in Dallas. And we were trying to avoid doing that. And so I called the airlines and it was like a two hour wait. Um, So I had the option to stay on hold or be put on a callback list. So I went on the callback list. And about 1 o'clock in the morning, they called me. And they're like, well, there's nothing going from Dallas to Seattle um, that day. I explained to them about the separate reservation for our Anchorage to Kodiak flight. And because of the way that reservation was, because it was set up through my wife's um, uh, medical provider, because... There was uh, medical travel involved at the beginning of our trip, um, so they were providing um, from Kodak to Anchorage and Anchorage back to Kodiak. And so the airlines weren't able to do anything with that res- with that uh, flight, so we had to be there in time for that flight. And so they're like, well, we could change your original flight. You can leave at 6 in the morning, fly to Chicago, and then... You can still make your connecting flight in Seattle to Anchorage, and we could have just done our original overnight in Anchorage like planned and make our flight to Kodiak the next day. So we do that. My wife's not real happy with that, about that because the whole reason we chose to take the Dallas route was because it allowed us to leave later in the day and not have to, you know, get up so early and go to the airport. But that was the only option. And so we get up, get on our flight to Chicago. We get to Chicago, and the flight to Seattle before ours was still there. And then that flight kept getting delayed. And then it gets time, you know, our flight's supposed to be getting ready to board, and the flight prior still hasn't left. And so then we noticed our flight started getting delayed. And then a few hours go by, and they're like, they canceled the flight we're to be on, but the flight that was scheduled to leave before us was still, uh, you know, supposed to go. And so they're like, well, we're going to, what they were doing is they're consolidating the two flights. So only one flight uh, into Seattle, because there's enough room on the aircraft to, to do that. And then... That flight still kept getting delayed. And then they finally canceled that flight. And this is around, I think, 3 or 4 o'clock. And so we, uh, you know, went, 
got our bags. Luckily, uh, in Chicago O'Hare, there's a hotel within the that's connected to the airport, so we didn't have to get a cab or rent a car to go be able to get a hotel. We didn't have to, you know, find somewhere, you know, to sleep in the hotel. We, in the airport, we were able to, you know, get a hotel room at a reasonable price. And so we overnighted. Um, they rescheduled us for a flight to Seattle in the morning. Uh, my wife called um, the travel department uh, for her native corporation that provides the medical travel. And they they were able to just reschedule us on a different flight back to Kodiak from Anchorage. So... We did an overnight in Chicago. Um, we decided to go, you know, out to eat um, for dinner that night. And so we took a cab. And a round trip for like a three miles ended up being like almost $100 in cab fares. It was crazy. I was not happy about that. But I was fine with it because, you know, We'd get to eat out uh, one more time before we got back to Kodiak, where there's just not, one, there's only a few options in town, and two, we try not to eat out when we're home. We try to, you know, cook meals ourselves at home, try and eat as healthy as we can. And so it's like, you know, one last, you know, meal out, (laughs) and we get to where we were going. And they were um, reservations only uh, because of COVID restrictions. And they were already um, booked for the whole night. But luckily, we were still able to get a to-go order in and just wait for the to-go order. But, so that was kind of just like, oh my gosh, it's just these little, little aggravating kinks that weren't planned just kept happening. And then, so we... We were able to make the next flight uh, to Seattle, and then after that, there was no issues. We got to Anchorage just fine. And then we got to Anchorage, and so when we realized, you know, the flight delay, we were like, oh, well, what are we going to do for dinner when we get to Anchorage? And I was like, oh, well, we could go to the Glacier Brew House. And so we look it up to make sure that they're not doing the same thing. Because usually, without the COVID restrictions, you need a reservation to get in there anyways. And sure enough, they're, you know, they've added a reservation thing to their website. Before, if you wanted reservations, you had to call, but now you can just do it on their website. And I think part of it is because they're wanting to encourage reservations more um, due to COVID. And so, they have no reservations. I was like, well, they have a thing to be notified if a time slot becomes available. And so, you know, I was like, yeah, I'll do that anyways. Well, we get on our flight uh, from Chicago to Seattle. We get into Seattle, and when I take my phone off airplane mode, I notice I have an email from uh, the reservation website saying that there was a time slot available. And so I go, I click on it, I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to make our reservation. And the time slot was no longer available um, because it happened at some point during this, you know, three and a half hour flight. I was like, dang, we missed it. So I put my name back on the list to be notified again. And like 10 minutes before we board, I got uh, the notification from my phone that a six o'clock slot had become available. So I was like, yep, made the reservation. And so... We got to go to the Glacier Brew House um, for dinner that night, um, which is nice because um, we haven't. It's probably been over two years since I've been there because one, I haven't been to Anchorage in the last year because of um, COVID, and then two, it's like the last several times that we have gone to Anchorage, um, it's just been like we go there and it's a long wait or. We call ahead, and they're already booked up for the night. Um, and so it's like we kind of just quit going there. And so it was nice because we got to we haven't been there in so long, and the food, as always, is really good. And so that was fun. We got to do that. And Calson, 
He, like, he was asleep before we left the restaurant, and we left the restaurant at, like, 7.30, because his body's still, you know, on the central time zone, so it's a three-hour difference, so it was past when he was going to bed while we were in Arkansas, and he, like, just fell asleep in the, in the booth at the, at the restaurant, so that was kind of funny, and so, yeah, that was really cool, um, that was a lot of fun. But, yeah, it was kind of just an un- a lot of little unexpected things on this on that trip, on the return trip home. But nothing just real crazy that we couldn't deal with. And, yeah, I mean, it's just stuff that will make good stories in the future. Uh, things we can look back on and, you know, laugh at later. And... So that's that's something. Whenever I go through something that uh, really stresses me out, really causes um, issues in the moment, I try and step back, and that's something I always tell myself. I'm like, "Hey, this sucks now, but you know, ten years from now, I'm gonna look back and be like, oh, man, remember that time when our flights kept getting delayed in Chicago, and we had to stay the night in the airport hotel?" Yeah, you know. We're going to look back and be like, oh man, that was kind of sucked at the moment, but I'm glad it happened because now we can look back at it and kind of laugh on it. It's a fun story that we'll be able to tell our kids later. Um, so even on those crappy things like that, you know, f- it's trying to find that little positive, you know, even if it's just, well, this sucks and I know it's going to suck, but in the future I can laugh on it or look back and find something about it to... Like, oh, man, why was I stressed about that? You know. So finding those little things is always, you know, something that helps me when dealing with with those types of situations. Especially when it's just a bunch of, like, little naggy things that keep coming up. Because in the grand scheme, you know, spending an extra night in Chicago unplanned isn't, isn't the end of the world. It's not super traumatic. You know, it's not nothing bad. It's just naggy at the time so being able to look back and be like yep that's funny that's a great story to to tell in the future and yeah and that was pretty much you know the return back to Kodiak and it's funny because like like I said last week there's a little ice storm that gave us a little trouble getting out of my brother's driveway uh before we left but, so after I parked the car at my mom's, because of that ice storm, um, usually I'll leave my car at my grandparents while I'm gone, or while I'm gone, while I'm home, actually, <laughs> um, so, but because of that ice storm, the hill to their house, um, uh, it, it's just too, too slick, too dangerous to try and take my car up there, and so I left it at my, uh, mom's house, and she moved it next to their camper, uh, because we don't know how long it's going to be. And, well, they actually got a really big snowstorm um, in Arkansas. And so it was like, we just missed that. Had we done uh, what my wife wanted to do and just delay our flight out of Little Rock a day, we would still be in Arkansas because we wouldn't have been able to leave my mom's house because of the snow. Just because um, that sounds silly that, we're not able to leave because of the snow, but it's not like, you know, here in Alaska or a lot of northern states where roads are easily maintained in the snow just because, you know, the cities don't have the proper equipment to maintain um, the snow as quickly and effectively just because it's such an uncommon occurrence. And so we would have still been in Arkansas this week um, just because of that. And so we get back to Kodiak, though, and it's like there's, you know, hard, there's like no snow. Like It's like in the mid to high 30s. And it's like, oh, man, our weather is like just totally swapped. Like, what is up with this? And then today it finally, you know, it snowed and we got a couple, we got a couple inches. Not a whole lot, but we got a little bit of snow in. And so I text my brother. I was like, oh man, the weather finally caught up to us. It's like, it followed us from Alaska to 
Arkansas, then finally caught up to, Ar- to us in Arkansas when we left. And now that we're back in Kodak, it finally made its way back to us. And I was like, that's just kind of kind of funny in my mind. And yeah, and that's going to be it for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you know, please subscribe. Um, if you're checking me out on YouTube, you know, subscribe on there. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my YouTube videos have puffin drawings going along with them. Those drawings also find their way to Instagram. So if you're into, you know, little character puffin drawings, check those out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at, at Potent Puffin. Um, if you're into the spooky paranormal stuff, uh, give my other podcast a listen. Uh, Paranormal Puffin comes out every third Friday of the month. So if you're into that kind of thing, check that out as well. And yeah, I'll catch you.